This episode of the Retailers Podcast is sponsored by Sky4 TV. Sky4 TV is a fully independent local television station serving all of northeastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. Their mission is to provide affordable broadcast television and digital marketing solutions that help local businesses succeed and grow through their experience, creativity, and unparalleled commitment to customer service. Our guest today is Brian Cade, owner of Strength From Within. Brian, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Excited for this. Excellent. So why don't we get started by telling us a little bit about what Strength From Within, strength from within is. Yeah, so it's a fitness studio where we've been combining different aspects of the mind-body work so that people can move beyond their limitations, whether it's something emotionally or mentally keeping them from moving forward or physical limitations. I know I had several myself um, to move beyond chronic pain, knee pain, back pain, and get back to the activities they love doing. And then we have the fitness side that ties it all together. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into it to start with? Well, I've been, uh, the only thing I enjoyed studying growing up was exercise and nutrition. Um, And I found out you could go to school for that. Um, I got teased for being overweight. And so basically about 12, I was like, you know what, I'm going to figure this out and started reading everything I could at that age and started lifting, playing with things and ended up getting a degree in exercise science and wanted to share what I learned on the journey with other people going through it. Mm -hmm. And did you always have, like after you got your degree, did you go right into your own business or did you work for other people? Did you work as a personal trainer? Yeah, so I did personal training in a gym for about six months to a year and then realized I was, as an independent contractor, already doing my own business, still had to find clients and everything. And so I was like, if I'm going to learn those skills anyways, might as well open something for myself. Nice. So how did you get started then? Did you, you know, did you, did you find that there was, had to, had to be an investment or was it literally just sort of organic? Uh, most of it was organic. I joined uh, BNI, which is a business networking. Mm-hmm. And I met the space I'm in now used to be Elwell. Um, and found Caroline who owned El- owns Elwell. Um, they're now more of a virtual space, but they were in this location. And she said I could start the business under her umbrella and start training people in the gym here. Uh, we ended up splitting and working through um, a chiropractor and I found clients that way. I would do their corrective exercise, personal train, uh, corrective exercise, kind of like physical therapy for them and get their people moving better. And I found several clients that way. So most the investment in BNI, but most of it was organic and just figuring it out, um, meeting people as I went. Excellent. Which and how long have you been in business? Seven years now. Seven years. Okay. So you always, uh, when you first started, did you always think that you wanted to have the physical location? Did you give any thought to doing online coaching and training? Um, when I started, there was definitely not a thought online. And then it's been introduced as a model. And for most aspects of fitness i don't think the online model works um well it does clearly because people are doing it but there's there's so much to movement and how the body's moving that yes you can prescribe exercises and watching from a distance doesn't quite work the same way yeah i'm um, in my experience and so yes you can do it um but now people are pulling up apps that you can get all your workout plans and nutrition for like 20 bucks a month and yeah. so It's like, that is a great option. You can learn the exercises, but just because you have that tools, unless somebody's watching you and understands how your body works, that's going to be missing in that element. So so here, how's your, um, so putting on your business owner hat, how do you uh, combat that? Or how do you um, deal with that sort of uh, uh, option that people have for uh, getting in shape? Yeah. um, Usually we find people when they've tried the app, they're like, you know what? I'm doing the apps. I'm, I've done Planet Fitness. I've done the other gyms. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm lost. It doesn't feel right for me or I'm uncomfortable with it. So can you show me what to do? So there's, they're already coming in. If, they, if the app was working, they're probably not finding us. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's usually when they've tried it and they're like, okay, I need a little bit more. Or the other aspect is we all know what to do or typically five or six things to do to move us towards health, towards the things we want. But then something stops us. There's, there's something missing that keeps us move, from moving forward. So it's like that accountability, sometimes just accountability will allow us to do it, which is where we come in. 
and some why a lot of online programs work. And then there's also what else is going on? What do we feel like we're gonna miss out on if we actually have health and fitness in our lives? Like, does that mean we give up all social parties for the rest of our life? And so we come in to guide through those layers that unless somebody's talking with you and understanding you personally, it's gonna be missed. Absolutely. It's a, I've always thought this about, you know, good personal trainers. It's almost like a form of therapy too, because you got to work beyond just the lifting and telling them what to eat. You got to, yeah, find those hurdles and those uh, walls and work with the uh, client on how to get past those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and any good personal trainer is going to be doing that because the workout parts is easy. It may not feel easy in the moment. That's easy. You show up, go through the motions. It's then I think 168 hours, if you work with someone three hours a week, I can't remember how many hours in a week, but um, it's like all the hours that you're not seeing them, what's happening. It's like, how are they, if their kids are running around all the time or they, kids won't eat the foods that are healthy, how do you handle that? If they're too busy to eat or cook, how do you handle that? And it's pulling back those layers, like you said. Interesting. Are you, uh, um, in your business, where, where are you located for starters? Uh, Yorktown, uh, we're right in Kilm Creek and uh, bes beside the iceplex behind the Kroger. So right in there. And do you have a staff of people that are also trainers? Yes, I have three trainers um, and one. all of them are also doing the posture alignment certification as well. So trainers, posture alignment, and one of them is going to start the coaching process that I've been trained through. So there's a certification that they need to get to have the posture alignment therapy? Yes. Into it. Okay. And who do you get that through? Uh, Egoscue Institute. Um, there's a good book for people who are interested in becoming pain-free called Pain-Free. And the guy's <laughs> name Pete Egoscue, and he started this in the 70s and looked at basically how to realign the body so pain goes away. And everything's based off how do we stand, how do we move, and how do we restore it to the design we were supposed to have. Mm -hmm. And so you get certified through the Egoscue Institute to do that. I'm interested in, in terms of your staffing, how did you find your staff and how have you kept them through the pandemic? Um, well, we, I only had one at the end of the pandemic. We had four, then one moved away from military and then the other uh, ended up leaving. And so didn't really keep the whole staff, uh, kept my partner Liz in the mix. And mm -hmm. then um, basically the other two found me after the pandemic. Um, I mean, we're still kind of going through it. You could be yes. else you showed up. Yeah. Okay. So you got two and your partner Liz. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Are they, I was going to say, how do you find the right fit? Because there's obviously a difference just between someone who works at a gym and someone who works with you. So how do you find those people? Yeah, so or my they find you, but I mean, how do they know that that's what they're after? Well, um, they usually, I, I mean, I do have job postings up, so they'll email and stuff. And my basically interview process is to walk with them for an hour um, and see if one, can I enjoy walking with them for an hour? Because the, it, um, if I'm not enjoying it and I can't feel a warmth and a connection, I know clients aren't going to feel it. And so I usually ask a lot of questions. And then along the way, I stop asking questions and let them fill in the space. Mm -hmm. And if I'm walking and there's no space filled or they don't ask me questions, it's like probably not going to be a good fit to asking those questions to clients and everything. Mm -hmm. So I see how warm and how easily are they able to be interested in somebody other than themselves. Because uh, some trainers, it, it's about, hey, look what I can do. Look how good I am. Look how fit I am versus okay, cool, you're in shape. That's why you do what you do. But what is it about the person in front of you? What's their specific needs? Where are they at? What are their struggles? And if you, they can't ask that, they're not going to be a good fit. So it's really just, can I feel that personal connection? Because at the end of the day, all the training skills, that can be learned. If somebody is interested in helping someone in that, you can learn those skills. Somebody has to be, you can learn social skills and warmth and caring. It requires a lot more intention and a lot more effort. And you have to be aware that you can grow through that as well. And so I, I first focus on the inner attributes first. Mm, it's interesting. Because yeah, I'm, as uh, someone who is not <clears throat> into fitness, although I'd love to be, um, 
it's very intimidating. And for yeah, to go to to see someone who is a little bit about themselves or who is, you know, bulked up or looks, you know, very fit, it it is a scary thought to to open up to them because you think they're not going to understand, you know, they, they, they don't care. You know, there's just there is so many hurdles for someone to get through to even open the door. Yeah. And not even open the door. Sometimes the call, like often people have been thinking, I, I usually I ask like, how, how have you found us? And it's like, well, I've seen you on Facebook or saw your post for two years ago. And like, and I just finally got the courage to come in. And it's like that in, intimidation is a real thing because another layer of fitness is it's, you're not in the shape. You don't look and feel the way you want to feel and the believe yourself to be. So it's like, hey, I'm stuck and lost and overweight and don't feel good. Can you help me is a big step. And it's how do we make that comfortable enough and completely no judgment because I struggle with my own. I Like I got into this because I was overweight or teased for being overweight. And I struggle with beer and pizza and sugar, all the stuff that tastes good. And so it's like if we can create that place of acceptance and like, hey, I know it's challenging and like, we're going to get through this and we're going to take it one step at a time where it's not, we're doing 50 burpees day one. It's how do you move? What's it like when you walk and breaking it down? So it is comfortable and easy. Excellent. Yeah. So what are your, so we did a little, you know, we looked into the business. What are your three, like, uh, I guess, key points that you like to focus on? It was what the fitness weight loss, the posture alignment and the mind shift personal growth. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, so the mind shift and the posture alignment work is the biggest thing that probably makes us different. Um, and that shapes everything we do in the fitness side. Um, the posture alignment is most people, because we sit too much, um, then we try to exercise. We actually tend to make things worse when it comes to our body because we're strengthening the wrong muscles. And so most people trying to get in better shape will actually make things worse. Um, and we was like, ah, oh, my elbow hurts, my wrist hurt, back, whatever. And we just like, it's normal. It's part of the process. But because of how we live, we don't move as well as we should. And so we focus on restoring that with the body alignment and getting the muscles to do the job that we're supposed to when we didn't sit for eight hours a day and then tried to go work, work out. It's how do we get them moving correctly so that the body heals itself. We create the space. We don't treat anything. We're non-medical. But when the body creates a space where the stress off the joints goes away, because the, and some people's legs will go like this. And if you watch it, it's called valgus stress. Mm -hmm. Well, if the knee repositions, the stress off the knee goes away. So we focus on that aspect, realigning it so that when you squat, when you deadlift, when you do pushups, those all feel good. And we actually re recommend people go way slower than they think they should, because there's, what can you do physically from a right muscle standpoint and then what's the level you can do where all the other muscles that shouldn't help will help because you're asking it to and so we slow people down one of the quotes on the wall is hard is not progress progress is progress and so are you getting better are the right muscles working and does it actually get you healthier along the way and then the mind shift element there's a emotional aspect to pain and an emotional states will actually create our posture. If you imagine somebody who's angry, you're gonna see them carry themselves a certain way. And what does somebody who's chronically irritated do to their posture? If their shoulders and hands are a bit more tight or somebody who's very anxious is going to have a different feeling to them. You can see it in their posture. You can see when somebody's anxious or depressed. And you can feel when somebody, you can see somebody who's really confident and feels good about themselves. There's a way they carry themselves that all shows up in the body. And so emotionally is affecting posture. Posture will also affect things emotionally because if you're out of balance because your body's muscles aren't working right, well, if your body's out of balance, your mind can't be balanced either. And so, and then there's all the things about our beliefs for when it comes to the mind. It's like, do we believe it's possible to be healthy? Are we good enough to do it? Are what does it mean? I'm going to give up all my friends. <laughs> if I get in shape, am I going to be a bodybuilder alone in the gym for two hours a day and my friends won't ever see me? And so all those aspects work together so we can move forward. And this applies whether it's 
relationships, finances, fitness, our mind is shaping how we experience the world. And when we, we probably all, you all have had an aha moment where suddenly something or maybe an entire area of your life looked different and nothing changed, but something clicked. And we like to give those moments to people so that they don't have to maybe change their whole life, but they realize that there's a greater ease of movement. And how we approach anything is how we approach everything. So our mindset is gonna show up in the gym. Do we feel like we have to go hard all the time to make it count? Well, that's probably how you show up to your work. Are we able to take days off? Do we challenge ourselves a little bit beyond the comfort zone, but not too far? Because if we, in our life, we're not going beyond that comfort zone of, well, this feels easy, let's stay there. Well, we're never gonna stretch and grow in our real life. And so the fitness is where we get to play with all of that. And some people start in any one area. No one has to do it all. Um, but I believe that when we're elevating all parts, our body feeling good and strong, balanced, our mind doing the same, then the fitness part is an expression of those two put together. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So what, where does a nutrition or the weight loss uh, side work into it? Do you do any nutrition services or anything on that lens? Yeah, um, we have several meal plans that work for most people. Um, and then we uh, have a LOL, uh, they're the dietitians. We'll actually refer out if somebody's stuck and they're doing the meal plan and they're not getting results, then we'll refer out for that. But at the end of the day, most of it just comes out, take, cut out processed foods, processed sugars, eat more real food more often. I'm not going to say never have a beer, never have candy or cake. But the more you stick to real food in a balanced way and stop snacking, most people, it's going to work just fine. Um, and the, the biggest challenge is doing that. Do yeah. we create the space? Uh, I know somebody I worked with the other day went and ate McDonald's and a Big Mac almost every day. And it's like, yeah, that's probably not the best for health. And we all know this. Yeah. And it's like, if we just stop going to McDonald's and eat a real meal, she's going to do better. And we did some of the mind shift work and changed how she associated Big Mac. She's not eating a Big Mac for a whole week or gone to McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And it was effortless. Whereas before it was a struggle. She felt like she needed to have it. And so, yeah. Very interesting. So yeah. this is, we're, we're right at the new year. And mm -hmm. that's always the, the, by far the number one thing for New Year's resolution is getting in shape and weight loss and stuff. What are your thoughts on that resolution? Hmm. <laughs> I don't necessarily believe in any one time to do a resolution. It's my view, whether it's New Year's or whenever, is first know what you'd like your life to look like have an idea of the direction you'd like to go. And then imagine how you'd feel when you have all of that. Because sometimes the things that we think, we start a goal hoping to get something out of it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes for me, it wasn't fitness. Like I thought getting in shape would allow me to stop being teased. I'd feel confident, I'd be respected, I'd enjoy friendships. None of those are related to how I look. I mean, there's an aspect of that, but really learning to connect with people is gonna make the biggest difference. So what is it gonna give you? Is it that confidence? Is it that belief in yourself? And can you start to practice that emotion now? Because if you imagine being there now, wherever you guys, whatever your goal is, if you imagined being there and experiencing it in your mind, you're gonna feel that now. So if you can feel that now, and that's what you're aiming for is that feeling of security, safety, courage, confidence, of energy and vitality, and nothing changes, start there. Practice that on a daily basis. Because if you feel motivated and full of energy in the moment now, and then you say, well, what's the next smallest step to move me in that direction? Take that step. And then you're gonna get more information and the first step could be reading a book. First step could be walking outside and feeling the fresh air. It could be calling a trainer, but whatever that is for that person. And it may seem unrelated to uh, fitness. I had somebody the other day is like, well, I'm really working on my health and energy right now. 
And I was like, okay, and feel, what would you be feeling? And I said, okay, feeling this energy, what's the next smallest step? And she's like, stop worrying about other people's crap. <laughs> she started with, I need to get my nutrition in point. And then the, her smallest step is stop worrying about everyone else's crap. And if you stop worrying about that, she has the space. So my view is feel the energy now, be, have the end result, and then take a step. The cool thing about that is if you live from the energy you want to have when you have the goal, and each step you take, the energy expands. Whereas normally we have to push ourselves to move forward, this is going to pull you forward. And the other thing about that is if you're not aiming for the vision of what you want anymore, but you're living through that feeling, often we realize that sometimes that goal is not even important because it's about the energy and the feeling. And then beyond that is instead of most goals narrow into a bullseye, when you take one step, it expands your possibilities of what you actually want outward. And then you get to explore energy vitality in all the different ways versus it's got to look like this. Yeah. And if it's not this, I'm failing. Well, that's what yeah. you're saying about the, the woman who, who was about nutrition, but then in the end, it, the, the way she maybe got there was completely, you know, something quite different. Yes. And how much, I mean, we've all had the experience of worrying about other people and stressing about that. And it's like, how much energy is, do we get back when we stop that? Where she may feel good enough that she doesn't need to change her nutrition, or she has that energy to focus on it. Like you, like you said, she got all of that back and it wasn't about food for her. Yeah. And I think that's becoming more and more common um, in the earlier, you know, younger generations of just, you know, peer, you know, impression and pressure. And it's just, I'm, I mean, even I remember, uh, you know, going through my 20s even, I, it was just, it was all about what other people thought. And it wasn't until I reached like in my thirties that I went, you know what? It doesn't matter. Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, so getting them at the right time too is very important. Mm -hmm. um, so is there a way that you try and reach your community or educate sort of at a younger age, or do you sort of let people have that aha moment and come to you? Usually it's more people coming to us. I mean, we will do ads and stuff and, uh, we do work a lot on referrals, so people will refer us. And so as if you've had a profound shift where something changes, it's like you tell typically tell people about it. Mm -hmm. And so it's having people have the experience and then share it with others because unfortunately, I've had people shift patterns very quickly, but a lot of the things we do are very simple and they're not known about. So people don't necessarily come to a gym for anxiety, but probably 50% of the people that come in talk about having anxiety or stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so at least um, that amount. And so it's like offering, just inviting people, Hey, if there's a way to change that, would you be interested in it? And mm -hmm. then sometimes it's simple tools. Like uh, one is as simple as like, I've, we've had several people stop anxiety attacks um, just by passing a container back and forth. Now, as a reminder, we don't treat anything. So please talk to your doctor and everything else. <laughs> But just do, doing that stimulates the brain, left hemisphere and right hemisphere. It's similar to uh, if you've heard of EMDR, where eye movements help work with PTSD, mm -hmm. that pattern left and right will basically scramble a signal in the brain that is doing the pattern, whether it's anxiety, fear, anger, cravings. And if you do it long enough, usually two minutes or so, that the emotions start coming, well, Usually within 30 seconds, the pattern starts lessening and it may take two to three minutes or five to get all the way down. But then that's a simple way to access a feeling of calm that can allow you to change. So learning that for young people and helping people hear about it and guide is like, I want this stuff to be normal, where I've had people come to us after doctors. Um, I've told them you're going to be in pain the rest of your life at 35. And now not have much back, not have much pain at all, get up and move around. She couldn't get up and down off the floor. Or I saw someone with 20 years of PTSD and I wasn't treating PTSD. We talked about the emotion of anxiety at work. And it just so happened that when we changed that, the memories that were associated to that changed as well. And so it's a welcome side effect. <laughs> it is a welcome side effect. Yeah, the brain is in the brain and body are incredibly resilient. 
If you give it what it needs or practice, it'll make new, the brain will make new connections and the body will relearn new patterns. Mm -hmm. And so if you give it what it needs, the body takes care of everything else or the mind takes care of it. And so I've, I've seen some amazing transformations where other processes haven't worked. Um, Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So what is your goal as a business owner? Where, where are you trying to take uh, strength from within? Yeah. Um, the, it is going to be that um, I want a community mm-hmm. that is ability to get more deeper meaning out of life okay. and integrating the mind and the body together so that we can have a full expression. Because I believe that as we expand what we believe about ourselves and what's possible, everything else is impacted, our relationships, the people we come in contact with, and the more fulfilling life becomes at the same time. And so, yeah, just creating that space and having all of it in one place. I've got a gentleman who's 78. He's yeah. doing posture alignment to keep himself moving, and he's doing the mindset work to keep himself positive about the future. And it's like, he's like, I never would have thought I came in to learn this one piece and I never would have thought the mindset work would have been here too. Yeah. And I've been told that I needed to see a therapist and he's has done that route and he's chose to do talk with me instead. And by doing both aspects, it's like his all he's getting out of his own way faster. And so it's really integrating it more and getting deeper level of transformation for people. Mm-hmm. Um, my intention is that as we keep the business getting better, the longer someone is with us, the more their life expands and the better it becomes, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we are running low on time. So is there anything else you'd like to uh, say before we end? Or Kylie, any questions you'd like to get out? No, I don't think, I mean, I know that, well, Beth actually had mentioned that you used to be called Cade Fit, I think it was. Mm -hmm. What prompted you to change and was it the expansion into these other areas or you know that branding obviously was you Brian Cade (laughs) Um, what made that change that's just what I was interested in yeah so I started out because it was mostly fitness Um, so the two layers one is my Facebook account got hacked and I lost Cade Fit um, my because my personal account got hacked I lost all the business names and stuff on social media all right and strength from within has been on the back of the shirts, Cade Fit, and then it would say strength from within for the longest period as a tagline. Mm-hmm. And I started out at one point training people, but there was a coach I worked with and he said, you spend most of your time talking about emotional aspects, personal development. He's like, maybe you should be a motivational speaker. And that didn't quite fit, which is why I do the coaching work. And I like that personal touch, mm-hmm. but realize that most of the stuff I cared about is like fitness was a vehicle to allow that inner work, that inner growth, that stretching of oneself. Mm-hmm. And so when the account got hacked, I was like, you, you know what? Kate fit was originally about me. It was the brand is like everyone names their first business about themselves or not everyone, but a lot of times. And I was like, that's not what's important. It's that strength from within that we're creating for people and helping them develop. And so I was like, we, since everything's shifted, we might as well just go with that as the name because that fits more of what we do. Like you said, all these elements are a deeper level of work mm-hmm. that I feel like Kate Fit, yeah, they hear my name and it's like, okay, fitness. Mm-hmm. Right. That's just one part of, and that's just, like I said, the vehicle for the deeper growth and connection that people get from it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That makes, perfect sense. Sense. Yeah. that makes perfect sense. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for being on the show. It was great talking to you today. Yeah. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. All right. Well, you've been listening to the Retail List podcast. If you've enjoyed what you heard, you can find more at retailalliance.com slash retail dash is dash podcast, or you can search YouTube for Retail Alliance. I'm Joey Morgan. And I'm Kylie Ross-Seibert. Thanks for listening. 